Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Music Show. Yo, Chris. It's the Murder Master Music Show. Max Day. It's the Murder Master Music you Show. Life.com. It's the Murder Master Get Music Show. It's the Murder Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Gallup Music Gallup Show. Seven. It's the murder master they used to go. Hip hop is dead, but we don't resurrect it. You follow what mainstream says, but here it gets rejected. If you wearing tight jeans, don't expect to get respected. I'm from a time where wearing black was always on your checklist. From a time where fat is getting checked if they reckless. From a time where if you got too much shine, we snatch your necklace. This real shit here, Illuminati, fuck the industry. We represent the street and they respect our street ministries. Hate no shorts and cut the middleman, literally. This Hip hop savior, our birth scenes like nativity. This is a place where no one sells out for relevability. And the masses can get a chance to explore more creativity. You gotta be kidding me. If you call that hip hop, niggas with high stage, then fluorescent flip flop. We kill a big brother, cause we know he watch. You don't like what I'm doing, then you can suck mine. Oh, and it's you the don't murder die. Master music show. It's the murder 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 Master Music Show. Welcome to episode 304 of Murder Master Music Show. we got a special guest tonight, author and artist, Ronald Risky Brent. You might know him from uh, some uh, very famous album covers that he did over the years, uh, including Tupac's Illuminati, a lot of work for Death Row. We're going to bring him on right now. I think he's at a book sign, so we don't have much time. We're going to get right into it. How you doing, Ronald? Man, I'm doing good, man. Black. And you got the the book uh, Risky Forever. I believe that's available right now, is it not? Yes, yeah, available right now. Risky Forever from the streets to the industry. My life and art on Death Row Records. Now I, I find it very interesting because you did a lot of crucial pieces. When did you start uh, doing artwork for Death Row? Uh, I started doing artwork for Death Row at the at the first part of uh, 1996. Right before uh, the All Eyes on All Eyes on Me album dropped, that was my first project. The, the centerfold for that. Okay, okay. So you got you you. Was, I mean, you, what a hell of a project to jump in the mix in, in with. Um, what was it like working with Tupac, and um, how was he in describing to you what he wanted? I mean, working with Tupac. I mean, it was like. To me, it was kind of like a dream come true because, I mean, I was already a fan of his even before I got on Death Row. Just listening to, like, friends just had a baby, watching the movie, too. And then, you know, read about him, reading about him a lot and then, you know, listening to me against the world, that album. I mean, I was, like, I was like uh, fascinated with him. So it was it was a real crazy experience to be able to sit right next to him and talk to him about, you know, what he wanted to do for albums. I mean... On the All Eyes on Me album, I really didn't get that good of an explanation because my boy Head Dog rest in peace. He ended up getting the getting the artwork and he brought it. He ended up bringing it to me, and then we kind of collabed on our first project. So he had already had it had it on his mind, and I already got the word from Tupac on what we were supposed to do on that album. Yeah, yeah. And well, the the. The most famous piece I think he did was probably the Illuminati piece. Um, what was the process like as far as doing that? Was Pac, you know, hands on with you and, and telling you what he wanted? If so, how did, how was he breaking it down? Actually, that that's kind of a crazy story. Because when I first found out about doing the Illuminati album, I had got a call from Shug from the main office telling me what they wanted to put together. And uh, at that same time, he was telling me about that. We had a meeting later on that night, which I wrote about it in my book, From the Streets to the Industry. We had a meeting that same night at Gladstone. I took the I took the mock up to him. I showed Shug. Shug told me, "Let's get the work on it." I got the work on it. Maybe about a week later, I met up with Pop. That was even before I, I already knew that he wanted to be on the cross, but 
I didn't, I never filled in the cross. So when I had to meet up with Pop to show him, he explained to me what he, he wanted what he wanted the cross to be. And in the inside, he wanted the road map. And in the road map, he wanted to just display cities across the east and the west. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that's an iconic cover. I mean, it came out still phenomenal. I remember when they uh, uh, revealed it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, I mean, that's... And that's pretty much what the industry did to him. I mean, he was just, I mean, yeah, I'm just like, I remember why, what he went through his struggles. Um, Yo, know, see, did you get to know Pac at all? I, know. I mean, yeah. Pac was one of the main reasons why I was on that, bro. I mean, Suge introduced me to Tupac while they were shooting the California Love video at the Compton Swap And Pac looked through my uh, portfolio, and maybe about a month later, I was working on that project. And a month after that, I was hired on the death row to do to do other artwork underneath Joe Cool and Hendog. Wow. So he already had uh, Columinati in the works while he was already working on All Eyes on Me. Uh, no, I can't say that because All Eyes on Me was already, like, uh, basically at a billion sold before I even started working on Columinati. I didn't start working on Columinati until maybe about August. August. The end part of August, the beginning of September, because right after I turned it in, I turned I turned the album artwork in to Fox the same day, finished the same day that Friday before we left for Vegas, which was uh, September the sixth. Uh, then the next day he got shot. Next day he got shot, bro. Yeah. Wow. You no, know, that kind of kind of tore my career off. Tore my career off because that same day he was telling me. Uh, he was getting ready to host an art show for me. That boy had already given me a budget to start buying canvases and, and like, basically start doing artwork, and Pac was going to be the host of my art show. So he didn't make it back from Vegas. So all of that kind of fell fell by the wayside. Mm. Yeah, and we know, we, know, we know the rest. How do you feel about this biopic coming up? I mean, I would have to see it to even... I saw the trailer for it. I mean, it seems interesting, but, I mean, I have to really see it in order to just give my opinion on it. You know what I mean? But so far from what I've seen, it seems like it's interesting enough to make me want to step out and go see the movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. It looks pretty intense. Um, yeah, it does. But the only thing that I feel like if they're going to do it, I feel like it, it can't be a real Tupac story if they're not going to go into the Machiavelli album. Right, yeah, yeah, that's real. You, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. What, what were some of the other art pieces you did for Death Row? I mean, I did Death Row's Greatest Hit. I did Dad Dillinger's Retaliation Revenge and Get Back. I did Christmas on Death Row Records. Uh, um, I did, oh, Nate Dogg, he wasn't even part of Death Row. He left Death Row, but I had did the artwork for Nate Dogg. I did the artwork for Superfly. I did I did quite a few pieces there, and then I had other work that I, I did that never had the opportunity to come out, which is all like kind of placed in my books. Oh. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's iconic, and, and the book uh, the risky uh, uh, forever that's out available is available right now. Um, before we uh, uh, before we get out of here, what was Suge like? Uh, was he easy to work for? A lot of people seen him in the negative light. Uh, what what was your experience like with Suge? I never working at Death Row. I never had a, a experience with Suge. You know what I mean? I came from the same neighborhood Suge came from, so I got nothing but love. When I was at work, I mean, I really didn't have to work hard. I you know because a lot of times the projects would come up. I would I would do the project. The project might be doing a month. I have the project done in the day, so that gave me time to hang out in the studio, just be able to chill. I mean, Suge was at that time. Suge was very appreciative of me. He always showed me love, so I never had a problem with him like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, you know, that's good. The same thing. You know, a lot of people painted a negative picture of Jerry Heller, but we've had several people on the show that love him to death that work for them. I mean, Suge, Suge, Suge is who he Suge is who he is. You feel me? Everybody yeah. will have a different story about Suge. I mean, it depends on what 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 line you work in with him at 
to give him whatever attitude he had with you. If, you had, if he was on the loving side, he was on the loving side. If he was on the, the, the wrong side, you got the wrong side. You know what I mean? And, but I can't really speak too much because I haven't really, I haven't really experienced that wrong side because I was getting checked. You know? Yeah. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, now the book uh, "Risky Forever" from the streets to the industry of my life and art on Death Row Records. Uh, it's available right now. Matter of fact, I believe you're at a book sign, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I'm up at I'm up at Hall of Fame right now. So I'm here to do a book signing. Hall of Fame just released some limited clothing by me and Joe Cool. So we up here hanging right now. Right now, I'm at, I'm I'm, eating, I'm grabbing the bike to eat with my boy Michael Emmett. He's the one who edited the book, did a lot of work on the book with me. So I'm, we we kind of just chilling right now, eating some food, and then we're about to go step a couple of doors down, and you know the Hall of Fame to hang out till you know till the end of the night. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, people want to get the book. Uh, uh, you got a website they can go to. Or? Yeah, you can catch the book. You can get the book at riskyforever.com, and that's R-I-S-K-I-E-F-O-R-E-V-E-R.com. You can catch the book there with some of my other merchandise. I also sell, like, prints of my artwork from the Death Row days. Like, you know, uh, I just most recently put up skateboard decks. I got T-shirts. I got, I got, I got merchandise from, the, from those days that's on there also. Yeah. Yeah, so you got you got all kinds of stuff. I saw you got skateboards and skateboard decks and stuff. You know, so that's what's up, man. Definitely. Well, I appreciate you for coming on the show. Um uh, uh, thank you. I appreciate and, you guys uh, for having me. No doubt, no doubt, man. We'll we'll get at you real soon. Uh hope the book does real good and if uh you wanna get it over to us, we'll definitely review it over at the site. We get a lot of traffic over there, so uh, okay, you know uh, y'all just, you know, hit me up on my Facebook like y'all been doing, you know, and message me, and we'll see what we can work out. That's what it is. All right, homie, you take care of yourself, man. Man, thank you. I appreciate it, man. You guys have a good evening. All right, yeah. right on, man. Peace. Yeah, that was uh, Ronald Risky Brent. The book is Risky Forever. You know what I'm saying? From the streets to the industry, my life and art on Death Row Records. Look for that. Uh, some of the pieces he did, of course, was the Illuminati album for Tupac. Uh, that's one of my favorite Tupac albums. It's between that, Me Against the World, All Eyes on Me, uh, Tupacalypse Now, Thug Life, and uh, Strictly. Uh, <laughs> it's all of them. Uh, except for yeah, his yeah. album. I, well, I, I, it's hard to pick a favorite Pac album, man. It really right. is. Right. You said me against the world. Sometimes, man, I'm really feeling that album, and sometimes it's all eyes on me, you know. Um, so, but that's what it is, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to uh, Risky for coming through. I know he, uh, he's he got a, a, another event he's doing, so we appreciate him for uh, stopping by. Um, but uh, make sure you get that. Uh, also, do me a favor and uh, go check out... Uh, Last night's interview, or not last night, the night before, um, you know what I'm saying, we had uh, the homie from Detroit to Flint, we had Project Born, we had the homie Monty Frisso, and then, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, shit, we had KD from the Lynch Mob, you know what I'm saying, uh, the Lynch Mob is actually getting back together, that's wild shit, man, 22, 23 years after their last album, so, uh you know what I'm saying? Check that out. Just go to the website. You know what I'm saying? Uh, show some support. And also hit that, you know, hit that donation link up at the top. You know what I'm saying? We gotta we gotta do what we gotta do. This this isn't free. You gotta uh you know what I'm saying, gotta pay uh gotta pay the bills like anyone else. You know what I'm saying? Um I will say this, we might be having something for you in the future. You know what I'm saying, something for you to represent for us. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not going to let you know exactly what the fuck it is just yet, but something might be coming right, right. real soon. Um, going to need your support on that. Um, tomorrow, Underground Saturday Night, episode 18. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. You guys need to call into that motherfucker, man. You guys uh, hit the lines. You know what I'm saying? Call in and, and uh, kick it with Mac and Vel. They, they got a hell of a show. Um 
you guys, uh, you know, you, you really cover a lot of different bases. It's not just one thing. You know what I'm saying? You go into all different areas. So. Yeah, we be all over the place with it. They need to check us out, friends, for real, man. More boys coming back, Hell too, yeah. so. I'm yeah, going to be oh, stuffy, oh, mixed up until come, back. Uh, come tomorrow. DJ Max is going to be in the building. He's going to be on the ones and twos, I heard. So I'll be looking, I'll be looking for that. You know you got a good selection of music on the board, so you, we don't know what yeah, the hell yeah, you're going to play. Yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Well, let's go on a little break, and then we'll kick it for a few minutes. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, the dude was in and out, you know what I'm saying? Apparently, uh, you know, we scheduled this about a week ago. I like to try to schedule shows a good week in advance if possible. Apparently, he had... Uh, 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 another engagement, you know what I'm saying, which is all good. He was in and out. Got a couple questions in about the book. He was able to promote his book. We were able to speak right. on talk a little bit. All right, cool. You know, we'll bring him on again next time if he wants to come on. Maybe he'll stay a little bit longer. Other than that, you know, you know, it is what it is. Do what we got to do. Um, shit, man, I think we're going to we're going to get the fuck out of here. It's probably the shortest show we've ever done, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of them. 20 minutes. I thought Schooly D, uh, Sin, Sin just told me that uh, this was shorter than Schooly D. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, uh, you know, shout out to the homie, uh, uh, Sin's remind me, you know, Big Nance, you know, Big Nance, uh, he got a, a best-selling book. We helped revive his book a little bit, and he was very humble about it. Ben Westhoff uh, just dropped the original Gangsters. It's blowing up everywhere. We were the first ones to really get press for him on that book, and it's yeah, blowing up. Too. Um, mm-hmm. He's been on the show twice, and he's going to even come on the show a third time. He said he's down for whenever. So shout-out to the ones that actually – you know that are uh, they actually know who the Murder Master Music Show is and what we're about. You know we're not just some regular online radio show, even though we are an online radio show. We're a little bit more extraordinary than your fucking average. So you know, check the Hollywood shit at the door. You know, no names to be mentioned, but you know sometimes folks might might get us twisted with other people. You know, we're not the DJ of lads and, and things of that nature. But then again, we're also not your regular guy with a telephone uh, that's just going to be, you know, do, doing a blog talk show just talking about nothing. We're going to bring you guests each and every fucking week, maybe one, two, three, maybe even more uh, times. We're going to do the best to continue to do what we got to do. Keep going to UGSforlife.com and support what we're doing. Make sure to check out On the Ground Saturday night, tomorrow, 9 p.m. Central. Then we're going to have a church um, hopefully Skinny could come on the show. Uh, Lane's already confirmed that she's going to be on the show with me. Um, then we got to talk about this crap that's continuing to go on, man. This horrible shit, and that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about police brutality and, and uh, people getting slaughtered for nothing. I just saw a guy have a stroke near pepper spraying him. Um... No, the guy just got a, a cop got 200. One good thing I saw, a cop got 230 years for raping 13 women. Uh, he got 230 years. Yeah, and he cried like sentence. a little bitch, too. Yeah, he cried, you seen that? Yeah, he was crying like a bitch. Well, because he knew that what was getting ready to come for the next 230 years was somebody inside his ass. And and uh, he knew what was coming, but you know, turn turn about fair play. That's what that's what you get, motherfucker. Um, so good riddance to him. They charged um, the the female officer who uh, gunned down the innocent man with his hands in the air earlier in the week. They charged her with first degree manslaughter, um, which she more than likely is going to get off. And that's the type of stuff we're going to talk about this Sunday and, of course, a whole bunch of other things. We might even talk about the invisible cities you've been seeing over the fucking clouds in China. You hear about that shit, Mac? People seeing cities up in the fucking nah, I sky. Heard that. I'll send you a video. It'll trip your mind out. And it was reported on the news. It was even on Ancient Aliens. Um, people uh, in China have been uh, videotaping 
uh, this, this this weird phenomenon. I think personally it's some hologram, but they videotaped this like in the clouds of the city. It's crazy shit. Um, and other people have done it too, and they they, they claim that those were fake. But this one uh, here, it looks like some type of hologram image. You know what I'm saying? Of a big ass fucking city floating on a cloud. Something <laughs> you see it's Super Mario Brothers. They're really fucking with the people's minds nowadays. I'm telling you, you know, saying uh, they're really, uh, really doing some crazy, extra, extraordinary, fucked up shit to to fuck with your mind. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna find that video for you. Show uh, you that shit. Uh. But uh, people uh, don't fall for it. That's the same type of shit we were talking about in, in years ago. People were saying that the Jesus hologram, what they were going to do is pro- project the hologram of Jesus into the sky, um, and people were going to all freak out, you know, hit the floor. And, oh, my God. Uh, and it was all going to be fake. And now we know they have this technology to do this. Um, so uh, check out that video. The one I found, it, it was entitled Mysterious City Appears in Sky Above China. Check out that video. It's some crazy shit, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, uh, some holographic shit, I think. I don't think it's uh, it's real. Um, the, the homie Sin is saying it's a hologram, Blue Beam Project. So look up Blue Beam Project, too. Yeah, we talk about all kinds of crazy shit on the Church of Reality. I don't know if you remember, we had Dope B on the show, and he was talking about uh, traveling intergalactically from planet to planet whenever the fuck he wanted to or something like that. So we go in on everything. We might be talking about people selling organs and body parts to people fucking going to different planets. You don't know what you're going to catch on the Church of Reality. Uh, so, So check that out. And then next week, uh, Tuesday, I believe, we got the homie Dez of Hellborn out of Jackson, Mississippi. He's got a brand new album. It's dope as fuck called Tunnel Vision. Um, you need to check that shit out. Other than that, you know what I'm saying? This is uh, you know, here's a little dedication to Tupac from one of his homies, Spice One. Sorry, me. We're out of here. Oh, yeah. See you guys uh, next week.